Welcome back to continuing coverage of the Zotac 25. This is the fifth game of the finals, the last match. Both players tied 2-2. Two to two. The winner of this game goes home with 100 euros. The loser goes home with a story to tell. Spawning at the 7 o'clock position. In the bottom, we have Select spawning in blue versus Demaga, our Zerg player spawning at the 2 o'clock position in red. It's going to be a Zerg versus Terran on Delta Quadrant, last match of the finals. If you don't know what the Zotac Cup is, the Zotac Cup is a European tournament hosted by on the European servers open to any player who is capable of logging on to the European realm to play their games. Taking a look, Demega sending his scout out. Just going to take a nice quick look at this map here. This is Delta Quadrant. As you'll note, your base has got a nice ramp here protecting it to your natural expansion. But, a last, but to note, you have another natural expansion that is protected by rocks but the thing to note is there's this dangerous cliff here cliffs are generally Terran's best friend and Zerg's worst enemy you can put a siege tank here hit this hatchery hit this hatchery probably it's absolutely a very tough position for a Zerg to defend either one of these two hatcheries see what Demega decides to do if he decides to take some kind of far away expansion but select known for his dropship play I imagine that wouldn't be the best decision select going for supply depot followed by barracks not getting that early gas probably not gonna go for a quick factory Oh, at least I would not imagine a quick factory is coming out of that. Gas going down, followed by pool. There we go, pool going down. We're going to be seeing most likely a quick link speed. He needs to get units out to deal with this harassment, because as you'll note, this map is just so small. We're at the Demagas ramp. We're going to follow it across the field, across this nice watchtower. <gasps> And suddenly, you're at your opponent's base. This is a very short rush distance. Things like Hellions will be in your base in no time at all. And what's Demaga doing? Is he scouting? Or is he going to set a proxy hatch down because he doesn't want to expand in this dangerous location, but he might throw down a hatch, doesn't have enough money for it, we'll know in a second. Jumping toward Terran's base, producing a marine, just now getting his gas under production, getting that orbital command, very, very standard. To Maggot, looks like he's just scouting. He wants to know where Select is and wants to know where he is now, as he knows that he's not here due to this overlord getting there. He knows that he's not there due to that drone getting there. Process of elimination, process of elimination would leave this to be the base that he is currently at. Jerome finally getting there. Gonna run into a marine and probably run away. Yeah, there we go. Jerome gets out of there. Doesn't want to deal with that. Link speed already being produced. Should have had the production tab up sooner. I apologize. We have link speed on the way. Queen on the way. Two Zergs on the way. Marines supply depot. Not walling off. Oh, here we go. Throwing down that factory. I don't know if he's gonna have enough room for an add-on. We'll find out in a sec. Wow, an add-on just fits in that position. Look at that placement. Add-on with the factory. That is absolutely nice placement. He has played this map before, I would imagine. Coming down, we have a second gas going on. I feel like we're going to see some kind of tank drop or some kind of banshee play given the fast early two gas and Demaga finally expands. He decides to expand to this expansion. Knocking down these rocks takes too long with Zerglings. You're not going to have your second base out soon enough to do what you want to do. Zergling just doing a little bit of scouting, it looks like. Yep, just going to lay up that watchtower and hang out for a little while. Overlord finally getting in position. He's going to get a little bit of scout on select space. Factory just about done. He did throw it on attack level. We'll see if he flops these and goes for some kind of siege tanks. And look at that. Flip flopping we go. Is he going to get siege tanks? I would imagine so. That's the best thing you can get out of a tech lab because he does not yet producing an armory. Nope. Hellions and blue flame. Blue flame Hellions going onto the field. These will burn down Zerglings in a way I can only describe as terrible, terrible pain. Also burning down drones equally as painfully. Ling speed is now done. Is he going to transition to something else? He has 100 gas now, but he's not producing a layer. We'll see if he's going to use this gas for something else or if he's just banking it up right now for some ulterior motive. Zergling, get a little bit of scout information. He's going to know what's going on. I'm not 100% sure if he's able to see that Hellion, but he does know there's a tech lab on this factory. So once he sees the first Hellion, he can probably expect Blue Flame because you aren't going to produce Hellions out of a tech lab factory, at least... It's not as wise as doing it with a reactor. If you're going to do it, you're probably going to get Blue Flame or doing some kind of siege tank and roaches being out on to deal with those Hellions. Those Hellions are going to be pesky as all get out. Blue Flame is... Oh, he canceled Blue Flame and went to siege tank. He's not going Blue Flame. I could have sworn he started Blue Flame. Get those Zerglings. Those Zerglings doing everything. Can he catch that Hellion? But that Hellion's just going to get away. Looks like he's going... Yep, siege tank is now ready to go. Is he going to go for a dropship play? No, he's getting a quick expansion. He's probably going to start breaking those rocks any second now. Going to get that second expansion up very early. The nice thing about being a Terran player is you have this ramp here, and you're very protected. As I said, ledges can be abused by Zerg, but it's much harder to abuse them as a Zerg. You need a Nidus, or you need a drop, or you need Mutalist to really harass an expansion for a Terran player, especially on this map, the way it's so well protected. No land way to get there except for going up that ramp. And as you know, ramps are dangerous for Zergs all around, especially choke points as well. 
Let's go into roaches. He's got the roaches. Look at the position of these roaches. These roaches are positioned to prevent a hellion run by. Drones finally now being transferred to his expansion. Domanga doing everything macro wise it can. Finally getting that layer up and running. Still macroing off of just two bases. I'd imagine we'll probably see a quick third base out of Domanga because he doesn't like to sit on two bases for long, especially with the Terran player about to take a second base. Domanga likes to stay a base ahead at all times. Factory, second factory going down. Is he going to throw a tech lab on or is he going to throw a reactor? We'll know in a minute. St oh, I was about to say no armor yet, but here we go. Armory going down. Maybe transitioning to Thors because here we go. Tech lab going down. Is he building more tanks? Nope. Just holding on right now and still cracking away at these rocks. About to take his expansion. Hellions poking in, getting a little bit of scouting information. We'll see in a second what they can find out. Both Hellions have one kill each, probably killing a Zergling apiece. <coughs> Moving in. Nope. Decided to move out. Creep crawler too much. His roach is in position. Bailing Ness has finally gone down. Has he broken these rocks? No, hasn't he begun breaking the rocks down, so he may not expand there. A lot of times against a Terran opponent, you'll see Zerg players take an expansion here or an expansion here, as opposed to taking this expansion. As soon as I say it, Demega says, you don't know what you're talking about. But you'll find Fruit Dealer is notorious. He likes expansions far away because when a Zerg Terran player decides to start moving out, he can hit the Terran player while the Terran player is trying to get one of his two bases that are far away. The more tight-knit you are, the easier it is for the Terran player to just roll you over. This Overlord is now aware of this expansion. Select throwing up double missile turrets doesn't want any kind of harass on his newfound expansion. Hellion's still getting all the scouting information they could ever want. Zergling's breaking down these rocks. It looks like he's preparing for that third expansion, keeping his bases very tight knit. Generally, you'll see Zerg want to spread out and abuse their mobility, but not to Maga. To Maga says, I don't need to. I can play off of three bases as close as I want to. I'll take those other bases later when I feel like it. Don't you tell me what to do. Bailing Nest, Bailing's being produced, not working on the uh, Bailing Roll Speed. Probably going to work on that a little bit later, I'd imagine. Bailing Roll Speed is just huge in catching up those very speedy Marines, especially after they've been stimmed. Hasn't thrown out an Infestation Pit yet. Taking another look at our Terran player's base. Gas being produced. Getting gas out of three bases. Now he is going a Thor heavy army. Look at that. Thor there, Thor there. He's currently supply blocked over 67 out of 70, but Thors take four supply, I believe. No, they take six supply well off. Hellions being chased down by Zerglings, trying to do everything they can. But are they going to make it up their own wall? Yes, they just barely make it away. Demaga knows it's time to get away from that. Doesn't want to lose Zerglings if he doesn't have to. But now Demaga has the watchtower, just what he wanted. And he's just puking a little creep up here, getting as nasty as possible. This expansion is almost fully saturated. It's going to be a lot, a lot of minerals coming in for our Terran player, especially with two overload commands throwing down those mules two times. Excuse me, twice as fast. And it looks like he's adding on another another barracks. He's probably going to go some kind of very uh, mech heavy with a complement of marines. Those marines do huge amounts of damage. Don't take as much damage. These Thors are your tanks. The marines are your DPS. And tons of Zerglings being moved around from the Maga to Maga. Concentrating on what he likes. Those lower tier units. Adding on that infestation pit. Is he working on upgrades? No, hasn't gotten an upgrade yet. But he is going to have that bailing roll speed in any second now. Still working off of three bases, and he's already up to 94 supply. Bring up the supply tab, 90 to 97. Demaga ahead by seven. Hellions trying to get those little Zerglings off that watchtower, but forced to back up again. These Hellions are being pesky, getting three kills and two kills apiece. SCBs repairing them up, and look at that. A very underused ability, Corruption. He decides to corrupt that barracks. This is 30 seconds of time you will not be producing. This is an underused ability. As I said before, underused does not mean it's bad. It just means it's underused. I imagine we'll be seeing more of these abilities in the future because overseers are so good at scouting. And there's no reason not to slow down your opponent if you can. Interesting, he did not use it on the factory. Often use it on the barracks. And here we go, moving out of his base. Is he going for the push or is he going just to take that expansion? Here we go. Select is the only one who knows what he's planning. Looks like he's just going to sit down and turtle up, throwing out a bunker here. He might throw out another bunker here. But look at this, siege tanks spread out, Thor's in the front to tank, Marines here ready to go in case he needs to micro them back. Taking a close look at Demaga, Demaga now taking a fourth base, going right for that gold, just staying as tight knit as possible, taking over this base. Following with me, look at his creep spread, he is almost across the halfway point of the field with this creep. Look, he's got creep ready to take this base down here if he wants to, he could be operating off a double gold in no time at all. Taking a look, this Overseer just kind of chillax in here. Overlord knows what's up, but not going to push his in and get any more scouting information. What are you going to find out from looking at SCVs work? You're going to find out that SCVs do work. 
that's about it. Taking just a closer look here, we have Starport adding on a reactor. Is he going to go for double medevac? It looks that way because he's got so many barracks. He's, look, he's up to four barracks already. And these reactor barracks, reactor barracks, reactor barracks, tech lab. That is three reactors. That is six marines at a time. That is a lot of marines and a lot of marines fast. Here we go. Hellion's getting all the scouting information they can. Sending out a Hellion in each direction. No, that's an SCV, not a Hellion. Hellion going to scout it. Look at this. He is on gooey sticky creep, getting his tires all muddied up. Going to find out that Damag is taking the gold, not going to run to those units, but one Bailing desperately trying to chase down that Hellion. Hellion's going to get every bit of scouting information he could ever desire. Infestor's on the field. Damag is just getting this Infestor, Roach, Bailing army. Army tab is up 147 to 53. Income tab, 1,700 minerals to 2,000 minerals. The only reason that Select is able to keep up on these minerals is the fact that he has those mules, these gold minerals, are not yet saturated. Once they are, I think the mag is going to climb ahead with great speed. Bring up the units tab. We have a Thor, Siege Tank, Marine Army, two Thor, excuse me, two Marauders, and one Hellion. I wouldn't really count them in the army. And here we go, the mag is he going to do a bailing drop? Yes, bailing's being loaded up under that. Tons more bailings being produced. Bring up that production of 18 more bailings being produced. Where is he going with these Hellions? The mag, let me know so I can see your greatness. Is he going to go right for those SCVs? Is he going to go some kind of other place? Looks like he's going to go right for these SCVs, following him as he goes. But at the same time, Select is moving out across the field. These Bailings will do damage, but they won't do much against this army. Here we go. Nope, he just stops right there, decides to deal with his push first. The scan going down. Look at the way he's just destroying these creep tumors. All that work, spreading that creep. Gooey sticky creep, Dean, eaten alive. Tons of siege tanks. Look at that. Nine siege tanks. Tons of marines. Actually, those are Marauders. I clicked on, but tons of Marines. Here we go. Tamaga engaging. Oh, no. He, Fungal Grower is finally going down. Is he going to have enough units? It's going to be extremely close. All the Marines are now dead. He's stalling, dropping his Bailings on top. Bailing Carpet Bomb. Too much. Look at the way Tamaga just demolished that force. He could probably push in and take out his base right now. Planetary Fortress is extremely difficult to take down, but Select is in not a good position at all. Here we go. Moving in. Taking out that Bunker. Kind of snipe those Marines. Goodbye, Bunker. How much damage is Damaga going to do before this game is over? Damaga just destroying SCVs, fungal growthing everything he can, getting everything green and sticky. Roach is just now being cleaned up, forced to back up, but Damaga now in a commanding position. Army tab, 110 to 104. Damaga just barely ahead, but bring up that economy tab. 2,000 minerals to 1,600. 900 gas to 500 gas. He is getting a gas-heavy army. Look at the number of bailings. Production tab open, 21. More bailings being added on. This is absolutely gorgeous. And look at that, just sniping Overlord after Overlord, picking up his units, not going to allow him to be killed by those ground-only hitting units. I wish a Roach could pick up a Bailing and throw it at the sky and take down that Medivac, but no such luck. The Maga preparing for another base, it looks like. As soon as he hits 300 minerals, I'd be surprised if he doesn't. Boom, there goes another Hatchery, and look at this. He is now macroing off of five bases, and our Terran player is still macroing off of three, but a Terran player can easily make a maxed army off of three bases, and a maxed Terran army is extremely dangerous for a Zerg player to deal with. Marine finally getting dropped to take care of that Overlord that was getting all that scouting information, and a double drop ship's coming out. Is he going to snipe this, or is he going to go for another base? Looks like he's just going to float around and wait for a second. Nope, finally going to move out. Moving up, is he going to take out this hatchery? No, he decides he doesn't. This hatchery could just be canceled. This would be a waste of time. If you stop, just cancel a hatchery. You're not really doing as much damage as you could be doing. At least not with two dropships. Or if you could drop one marine and almost get Demaga to cancel that hatchery if you do it right. But no, the fact that Demaga already knows about this dropship. Look at that. He's got units already in position. He moved them up there as soon as those dropships passed by his hatchery. Is he going to drop for the gold or is he going to go for the main base? Looks like he's going to drop right in the gold, but these roaches are already in position. Marines going to be torched alive with these roaches, just get acid bath down, picking up his units, about to drop maybe into the main, and look at all these tech structures just sitting right here. He's got a carapace, he's got a weapon upgrade, he's got ultraless cavern getting chitinous plating. This is not going to be good for a Terran player. He needs to start sniping these tech facilities before these... Oh, and there we go, infested Terrans, fungal growth, Goodbye, dropships. You have met your maker. And at the same exact time, he's got a drop going down right here, forcing those ultralists to do nothing but dance around.